Well, good morning to you. Thank you for joining the webinar. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I wanted to just log in a couple of minutes early to make certain that you can hear me okay and you can see my screen. If you want to type in the chat box um, how the weather is in Las Vegas, if you're glad the caucus is over with. I know uh, I'm in Missouri and I know that uh, you've made the news for the last few days. It's been exciting to uh, see all of the um, interesting things that I always enjoy when I come to Las Vegas, seeing the lights and so forth. But I uh, always enjoy coming to Las Vegas. Interesting area. And I want to welcome you. So you have the opportunity to type in in the chat box. I'm going to take a look out there right now before we get started. It is a snowy day here in Missouri. It it uh, We thought spring was right around the corner. And man, all of a sudden, it just seems like um, a lot of snow came in last night, but it's getting warm today. It's supposed to get up into the 40s, and I, I'm looking out the window, and the snow is melting, so that's always good. So let's see here. Susan said the caucus was very disorganized, and we need to have the primaries back. Okay. I've heard that as well, Susan, so thank you. Al's in Las Vegas. This is, in fact, we want to welcome uh, your MLS is relatively new to RPR, so we appreciate and are excited to have you on board. And uh, I am a real estate uh, broker, and I'll tell you more about that in just a second. And uh, Susan says it's also 42 and sunny, a beautiful day. Susan, I guess you and Alfred are the only two who actually get a brand new iPad today because you were the only two who answered questions. No, actually, um, there's no free iPad. I'm sorry. I was just trying to get others to say what the weather was like and if they're excited to be here or not. But I will definitely give you an A plus, Susan and Alfred, so everybody can hear me okay, hopefully. And we'll get started here. It's 12 noon my time, 10 o'clock your time. Weather's fantastic. Thank you, Danielle. And I need to decline the call there. I actually had put my phone to decline all incoming calls. So, gosh. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. But if we get a phone call that comes in, I'll just hit the decline button. And, and uh, I went into settings. And I went into do not disturb. And I put allow calls from no one. So I don't know what's going on there. I did not want to put my phone on Wi-Fi, but uh, we should be okay. So we won't worry about that. Thank you, Danielle and Julie. Well, it's time to get started. And again, if a phone comes, if a phone call comes in on my phone, I'm actually mirroring my phone onto the um, onto the screen. And so you might see a call come in or a voicemail, and I'll take care of that. All right, so we're going to talk about RPR and the mobile app. And as you can see, uh, we're looking live at my RPR or my, my iPhone, and we're going to go right into RPR, and I'll show you a little bit about RPR and how it, how it works. First of all, my name is John Mayfield. I, uh, I'm a full-time broker and a full-time speaker and author, so I do both and uh, stay very busy. I'm licensed both in Missouri and Florida, and I also work in Nice, France, so I get to go international and do some inter some real estate abroad. I, I received my license at the age of 18 in 1978. You can do the math, but I'm in the trenches, and I uh, I do speak and talk about technology all over the world. and. And, uh, but I still love real estate. That's my first hat that I wear, and I work with buyers and sellers. And I'm here to tell you, I absolutely love the RPR app. It's wonderful, and it's going to be your best friend. So what I'm going to do today is kind of walk you through how I use RPR and how you can use RPR as well, and just show you some interesting things that that um, and how I'm using it in my business. I do want you to ask questions this is not a real long RPR class, and if you if you have not downloaded the app, uh, you can do that for the iPhone uh, from the iTunes, you know, from iTunes, and it, just look for RPR. I'm going to go over here to my real estate uh, folder, 
and you can see RPR right in the middle. That's what it's going to look like. And if you have an Android device, you can download the RPR app for the Android as well. I have uh, used, I use both the iPhone and the Android, so I'm familiar with both um, platforms. They both work almost identically. Uh, there's a couple maybe shortcuts on the Android that uh, that you might find, but nothing major. Everything works fine, and and I think you'll like it. If you have a Microsoft phone, I'm sorry, we don't have an app for the micro Microsoft uh, phone, but um, hopefully you can watch along and kind of see what we're doing. And by the way, if you haven't downloaded the app, just kind of sit back and watch, and I'll, I'll go through and point some things out. I'll be sure and give you my contact information at the conclusion, and you are more than welcome to call me or write me, and I mean that with all sincerity. I do the national webinars once a month. We'll be doing another one next week for the RPR General, and you can sign up for that webinar. We'll have 1,800 or so people sign up, and I make that same offer to those folks. In this last RPR session, it was a, it was a great session. I got lots of wonderful feedback, and I must have received 30 calls from people who needed additional help, and three or four of those people said, you know, they just didn't get they were trying to get it, and so I did a go-to meeting and showed them how we could how to resolve their issues. And, and that same offers for you, so I want you to know that right up front. If you have some help, I'll give you my contact information. So you want to make sure you download the app. If you haven't done that, no worries. Just sit back, watch, and we'll get started here. So when you log into RPR, you will notice either your company logo, if your company is not registered their logo with RPR. It's free. Your broker can do that. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of the uh, session as well. It, because if you're seeing the MLS logo for Las Vegas, you definitely want to update that and have, your, have that branded with your agency logo. I think that's very important to do. Now, I've kind of gone in and overridden the sessions and I am... Um, and by the way, one last thing, I'm recording this session for you as well. I'll put that on my website. So if you need to go back and watch this recording, I am recording it and I'll have it online and I'll show you where to get that momentarily. So I've logged into RPR. This is what it looks like from the front page. Um, and if you were to take your finger and if I was to swipe toward the left of the screen, I was just to swipe over to the left, you can notice that I have the ability to look at three different home screens here. That's kind of an interesting uh, feature because the other day I was out and um, someone wanted to have some information on a particular property and I just scrolled over to the search bar and I went right into the search bar and um, actually I'm going to go back here. I tapped right into the search bar and I just typed in their address and was able to go right to their property. So you have some interesting ways there from the home screen by just sliding your finger. I mean, and you're already used to doing that with your iPhone and, and your uh, Android phone, I'm sure, where you use your finger and you move around. And, and so that's built right into the, to the app. Now, here's a really cool thing that you can do. If you say... You know, John, I, I don't like this default where it's showing me what's going on. When I pull my app up, I, I generally want to go in and start searching on my own for properties. Well, you can set the screen right here. And if you'll notice, there's a, uh, let me start up, fire up a little program that will help us out here. Uh, just, I, I like to use this one and I, my apologies, I should have had this pulled up, but I think this will make it a little bit easier for you as I begin to, to, uh, to show things and we'll do red here, right here. There's a little home icon. Notice if I take my finger and I press on that. It changes and it now, you probably saw that in the middle, this is now my default screen. So if I wanted to 
go back to this screen. Again, all I have to do is take my finger, press this home icon, hold it down for just a second, and it will turn a different color and it will make that your default screen. So that's kind of an interesting way that you can set your default screen up. By the way, and, and I really, I leave mine at this default because I want to know what's kind of going on in the marketplace. And I'm going to show you that you'll notice we're searching within a five mile, half a mile radius. And that's important. And I'm going to show you why. But here's why I leave my my default screen to this particular screen. I can at any time go up and select the magnifying glass and go right into searching. So you have the ability to, um, to, to search very quickly from the home screen by just selecting this little icon right right there, the, the um, magnifying glass. I can also at any time, if I'm over in this screen, looking at the stats for Las Vegas, if I want to see properties that are within my GPS location, notice that I can press that arrow and it zooms me in within a half mile radius of where I'm standing. Although I'm not standing in Las Vegas right now, I'm in Missouri, but I, I went in and overrode the parameters, but you kind of understand and get the, uh, the point of where I'm at. You can also select the list button right here. And now I have a list of the properties. And by the way, and I, be, I use this app every day. I always select list because it just is easier for me to find the property I want rather than trying to dig around here and zooming in or out with so if you just select list, you can you can scroll on down. And that leads me to my next point, why you may want to set your geographical area to a half mile or more. Typical way I use this application, um, when I'm working with buyers and we're looking at a property, first thing I do, get a, you know, I knock on the door. If it's empty, I use my lockbox key. I open the door. And I turn the lights on and I start, you know, getting things prepared so they can look around. You know what we like to do. I like lights on. I like the drapes open, the blinds, you know, open. I want lots of light coming into the house. And so I'm kind of going through, checking things out, turning lights on and, and all of that. If the sellers have not done that for me. The second thing I do is take my phone out not in front of the clients. I mean, I kind of tell them what's what I'm using my phone and my app. I educate them for that. But I actually will then from the, um, I'm just going to hit the home icon. I'm, I bring my phone up and I turn RPR on and this is a screen I see. Now remember, RPR is defaulting within a half mile radius. So in my, so that way I don't have like hundreds of properties here to, to look at. So I'm going to select the, uh, the properties for sale. So I'll just press my finger on that button right there. And the next thing I do is select the list button. Now I'm doing that because I want to find the house that I'm showing. And normally it's going to be in the first or second position. And so if this is the house I'm showing, I can select that and boom, I've got all of the information I'm looking for, for that property. And I'm going to explain to you how I use this application in uh, some various ways. In fact, if I was showing this house, I can see that it's listed for 381000 Doesn't look like we have an RPR, but I know how many days it's been on the market. I have some other information here. And by the way, if my if my buyers like this house and they're pretty excited and they've got a couple of questions, boom, all I have to do is select that button and I can call Robin in the, in the click of a, just, just that easily. So that's how I'm using it. And that's why I keep the map defaulted to a half mile or, or, or less. There will be times you may want to expand your search. And so what I want us to look at first is this little gear icon right here. 
And that is where we're going, going to press that gear icon and we are going to go into some settings. So, you know, we have our welcome guide and you have your profile. I'm not going to bore you with all of this. Um, the MLS, you, you should have that set up. By the way, everything on this application is going to mirror what's going on in your desktop. So as you set all of this stuff up, everything stays in sync. But what I want us to take a look at is this user settings right here. I mean, I, I want you to go out and take a look at all of this stuff and, um, you know, look, look at what's here. But I, I don't want to waste our time on the, on the session doing that today. So I'm going to select user settings. And right here is where I can uh, make some changes. So if I wanted, you can see right here, if I wanted to set this out to two miles, let's just leave it at two miles. Now, here's the thing on the iPhone. The Android, I believe, unless they've changed that, the Android, you can just close this screen. Like if I touched, if I touch right here with my, with my finger, nothing changes. Okay. Now, let me go back and show you why nothing changed. So I'm going to the gear icon right up there in the top left corner, and I'm going to user settings. See where we're at? Right here's where I overrid my location. And I said, I want to override that because I want to go directly to Las Vegas. That's now they have me turned on for your MLS for this presentation only. And then they'll, they'll turn my, access off, but you won't be able to see MLS data anywhere else. But if you wanted to pull up neighborhood facts and figures, you can do that uh, by overriding that there. But notice here, we set the location, right? So I'm going to set that to two miles. I'm going to move that out to one mile, two miles. There's a save button right down here. And I don't, at least the Android used to not, you, you used to be able to just close that. So if you're an iPhone user, don't forget to hit the save button. Okay. Just a little tip there to help you out. Now I can also change my sods. So if I don't want my sods to, whoops, I accidentally hit the wrong button there, but notice, see, I've got lots more properties. And for me, if I select 489 properties, and I'm showing a house and I select the list button, I may have to scroll through to find the property I'm inside. And remember, I want to find the property that I'm looking at. So to me, it just makes more sense if you, again, we'll click the gear icon in the top left. We'll go to user settings and we'll just back that to one mile uh, or half mile, 0.5 miles. And then you can also take the solds down to 60 days or 30 days. It's totally your preference. I think I'll just move it to 30 days. And notice here, I can change some other parameters down below. So this is all under user settings. And if you are an iPhone user, don't forget to hit the save button, okay? Because I just changed my sold settings. So now I've changed the save button. And really all you have to do is just, just press your finger right out in this area. So I'll press my finger there and we're good to go. So you want to do that first. We talked about the settings. We talked about the ability to scroll through and look at some properties here. Uh, I've, ta I've talked to you about this search icon right up here, which is a great feature because now I can literally go out by selecting the search button and I can type in an address up here at the top. I can look at any saved properties I have, any recent searches. So see, this is interesting. And, and one, one of the th things I love about RPR, yesterday I was doing a class in St. Louis for a group and here's a property we pulled up and looked at on my desktop computer in class in St. Louis. And notice it's under my recent searches. So you'll really like that feature. And then any properties you save, customers or clients you're working with, 
those searches are saved there. And then look at the last tab over here, the advanced tab. Now we have the ability to make, to do some specific searches. So if I wanted to search by name within my location, I can do that as well. So if you went into owner's name, all I have to do here is put in, and, and actually sometimes you can put the street and city uh, and zip. Sometimes you can just put the street, it just depends on the size of the community. And sometimes, and then just type in their name and hit search. Um, situation. So let me see here. My screen is there. So I'm going to just exit out and go back into RPR. Now that's nothing to do on your end. It's probably more with me mirroring the computer. So let me jump out, take a look and see if we have any questions. Uh, because this is your course and I want to make sure. So here is Diana. She says, um, can you search a wider area uh, than one fourth miles where you're at? And the answer is yes. And I, I, hopefully I answered that question for you, Diana, but I also noticed you said, can you search for rentals? So let's go back here. Um, let me see here. I don't, Go right back here. I was had the question bank up. Let's go to the icon, the uh, search icon. So I'm going to go right here, the search icon. And here we want to actually, Diana, let's close this screen here. Let's go over here to the, to the, um, gear icon. To answer your question, I don't know. I guess that would depend if those are in your MLS. And there is a way where we can, let's go right over here. Here we go. This screen here, Diana, which is one of the three home screens. It's a search screen. Notice, and I don't know, but we're going to find out here. Right here, you have change search defaults and you have advanced search. Let's take a look at the advanced search because that's a great question. And I appreciate you asking that. Here, um, we were in that recently, so I'm going to exit out. Now let's go into change search defaults and include all property types. And here, if you have rentals in your MLS, they would be here. But I'm not seeing the ability to search for rentals. So you can see that I have all for sale, but I don't see a rental section. So that to, it's a great question. And I'm going to just go down and look. I do not see the opportunity to do that. I wanted to find that. Thank you for the question. But here's the deal. And I talk about this in my live basic classes. We're in this world of big data. And in fact, I teach a, I teach a course on technology risk management for companies and organizations about how to keep your data safe and working mobile and in the cloud. And I read an article recently from, in the Wall Street Journal that a, a gentleman was talking about with this big issue with Apple and, and the iPhone and so forth. And I'm not advocating one way or the other, but this gentleman said, if we knew what our phones had inside them about us, <laughs> the information about us and what uh, the government or the, you know, others could find out about us. He said, we would absolutely be in rebellion to carry these things around. Cause he said, 
they know where you go. They and they, and they do. The iPhone's kind of scary now. So, great question. And I'm sorry we cannot uh, look for rentals in that. Uh, so there was a couple other questions. Let me take a look at those real quickly. Um, Lisa says I do not have user ses- settings on my Android. That's interesting, but um, your your homepage. Your Android does say home page settings. You should have some user settings there. So I I don't know, Linda, but that's one of those things I can check on for you. Um Daniel says, I think I think we got disconnected. Can you hear me now? Okay, no problem. He can now. Um Diana says they do have rentals in the MLS. So I'm gonna make a note of that and uh and I will, um, and Linda found her Android. Good. Okay. And so good. And then can you just quickly show me, uh, what was that, Daniel? Let me look at your question. Oh, recently sold. Can you just show quickly show me where a second ago? Okay. On recently sold. Yes. If you, um, I went into user settings, the settings tab, and then user settings. And right here's where I changed the recently sold. It's right. in So same place you, you set your, your mileage ads where you could do that as well. Now, um, someone answered about, you're welcome. Thank you for that. Someone answered uh, the question on the rentals. And I think that was Linda. Or Diane. Yeah, it was Diana. Um, if that's in your MLS, it could probably very easily be brought over to RPR. So I'm going to make a note of that and I'll get that information to my colleagues that I work with and we'll see if we can. So, all right. So somebody wants me to go a little faster. I'll do that as well. I'm just trying to go at, a, at an easy pace, but I understand that. So we, uh, we're on the main screen here, and uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like someone has called us and they want to look at a piece of property. And so you're, at a, you're, you're maybe at a restaurant, you're at home, wherever, somebody says, hey, can you look at a piece of property? You know, we want to look at a piece of property. And I'm just going to type in, I would type in the address right here. Now, again, I have an advanced search, so if I want to come in and look at various things, I can do that, but I'm going to just type in the address. Since I'm not from your area, I'm just going to pretend like that I went and someone called me about this specific house right here, okay? So I pull this property up, and this is going to have all the same information that I have that's inside RPR. You'll notice that I have pictures here I can look at. There's four different pictures. If I select one of these pictures, I get uh, this, and I actually have a Google view here. Notice what happens if I take my phone and I turn it sideways. I'm now able to slide through and look at the pictures that are in that particular view. So if I bring my phone back upright, I'm now looking at all four of those pictures. You will also notice right down here that there is the Google Street View and there's an aerial view. I can also go back to all four photos at any time. So I'll go to all four photos, I'll select the aerial view, and we'll select the Google View. And now, as you can see, I actually have the ability to look at this from any of those angles, or I can go back to one picture. That is your photo information. Now, right here in the middle, notice that we have uh, the list price, 214.9, and we have the RVM. We're not covering the RVM. Hopefully, you've taken the basic class, and you know that stands for the Realtor Valuation Model. It's a computer algorithm that looks at what's going on in the marketplace, both SODs, publicly SODs, and MLS SODs, and it provides those, puts it into a formula, looks at all the data, looks at the forecast, and then it comes up with a 
automated valuation model. I also have listing details right here. So all of that information is there. Anytime I want to go back to the home screen, my home button's right up there. Now let's scroll on down. I have some additional information, all of the information about the property. Here's an interesting way that I use RPR. The other day, I'm out. I see an empty house. It's interesting to me because it looks like it's been empty for a while. Uh, you know, you can tell those types of homes. So I'm at the home screen. Again, mine's set to a half mile. When I say it's set to a half mile, it knows where I'm standing through the GPS on the phone. And so therefore, it says to me, John, you're right there where that blue dot is. In the, the, you know, this is me. And this is everything around you within a half mile. So I quickly select the list button up above. And I press the house I'm standing outside in front of. And look what I have immediately as I, as I go down here. They moved some of this information on yours. So I want to go back up here because normally in my MLS where I'm at, they, here we go. Um, I have the homeowner's information right in front of me, right up at the top, but they've got, they have yours moved a little bit, but a lot of times I'll have the homeowner's information will be right there uh, with their mailing address, which is kind of interesting. And I did not see that. Um, so we've got yours right, you know, there's the resident information, but sometimes you might see the mailing address right down in here, which is kind of nice. So within, within just a matter of, of seconds, I have the owner's name, the mailing address of that empty house. Right from, the, right from my smartphone. So you can notice we have lots of information, just like we do on the, on the regular side, all of the MLS. I have access to the Homeowners Association right there. And here's a graph where I can see what's going on. I can see this house right here compared to the marketplace. I can also, if there've been any change history, I can look at that information. I can also look at school information. So all of the schools are there. Room defaults, interior features, and exterior features. Now, one of the things that I really like, and you'll notice right down here at the bottom, that's going to disappear. If you just barely touch your phone, you will notice that you have the ability to call the agent, and you also have the ability for notes right here. I can also do a report and I can save it right there with the star. Watch what happens when I sell, I'm showing this property to some buyers and we go inside and, and like most buyers, they'll make comments about the house, what they like and don't like. Recently I was with some folks from Minneapolis and, you know, we were looking at seven houses in one day. We'd narrowed it down to seven and they only had one day to look and they had to purchase something on this trip that they came into. And so we narrowed it to seven. We were going to narrow that down to two or three and they all get confusing. So we're inside this house and I went and I select, I touched notes at the bottom. And now I have the ability to add a typed note. I can add a photo or I can add a memo. So if, you know, in this example, I heard the person say, you know, I'm not real crazy about this kitchen. I selected notes and now I can type, or if I want to use Siri, they are not very interested in a floor plan with the main bedroom upstairs, period. This house unfortunately had all of the bedrooms on the upper level. 
and now I've saved that. I can actually include that in my reports right here, or I can edit if I want to go back and make some changes. And now that note will be saved so that when we get back to the office, and, and the reason this is handy is because the folks from Minneapolis, we went, we went to Panera Bread, and we, we went to Panera Bread, and we were um, talking about the houses, and, and she was like, what about that house over on such and such? And, and I knew there were things about that house she didn't like. But when you're looking at six or seven houses in one day, they forget about that. I mean, we remember what they like and don't like, but for the buyer, it's a little bit challenging or difficult. So that's really a great item. Now, look at the uh, ad photo. I love this. We're inside the house and the owners have a plat of the property there. Now, all we have to do is select the ad photo and look, I can take a photo or I can select a photo from my. So at this point, if I wanted to take a picture, I can then use that photo. And do I want to add another photo? No, but this photo I took of that plat or the utilities or any other information the agent or the sellers have left on the countertop that they want us to have, you know, we're all professional information they want us to have about the house. Maybe it's a warranty on the roof or the furnace. You can now take a picture of that so that that important information, you've got a copy of it. I can also, and by the way, I can also include that in my reports. So if it was the utility cost, if I'm going to send a, this report out to my uh, buyer, I'm able to include that utility cost. And notice that I can go up and select add a memo and it automatically so i'm going to press the start record and it's automatically recording my information so i could say uh, this particular house you liked everything except you wish that it had the master bedroom on the main floor i pause and hit done one of the things that um I like about the audio note is we'll go back and do this again. So now I've got the note right here where I can play it, but let's add another memo and let's say you're going out to list this house. So if this was the house I was listing, I could with the seller's permission, make notes as I go through the house. It's got really uh, very intricate, um, crown molding throughout the living room. There's built-in bookcases, a very nice hutch bar. All I do is press the red button and it's paused. Now when I go into the kitchen, I hit the red button again and I can make notes about the kitchen and hit stop. And then when I'm done taking all of my notes, I press done. It's saved. I don't have to include that in the report. However, when I go back to begin putting this together and putting it in the MLS and my marketing materials, I now have my notes from the tour of the property. So it's like your own built-in digital recorder and all of your notes on the house. And what's great is, and, and I've literally in a, in a different iPad application, had a house that I had some buyers they asked me a question. They were very interested in um, a this house, but there was one thing that they wanted an answer for. And I knew that we had talked about that when I listed the house because I used another app with my iPad. I'm a tech guy, okay? So I use another app called Notability. Well, now I can just use this app. So as I'm listing the house, I'm going to do a CMA anyway on, on this property. I'm, a, I'm going to use RPR. Why not just go ahead and take notes? And, and a lot of times I'll ask the sellers, hey, do you mind if I turn this on and let it run while we go through the house? Because they're talking so quickly about things that, um, you know, they've done to the house. Someone wanted me to speed up the presentation a moment ago. And uh, but you know how it is. Sometimes when you're going on a listing appointment, you want them to slow down because they're like rattling off things about the central air and the trim work and the kitchen countertop and the roof. And well, this is now your go-to device for that. So I'm going to 
hit the back arrow right up here. And I've now created some notes for that property. And look at this. Let's go and hit the home, the home icon up in the top right corner. And notice I'm back here at the home screen, but you will notice down here we have three choices. So let's select the notes button. And what voila, as we say in France, <laughs> there's all of my notes. So I can easily, if I'm showing this property to someone, I can just go right out to that property and I could play that back and find the information the buyer was asking me. So it's very easily, I mean, very easy if someone has a question and you're like, hey, I remember the seller talking about that from the home screen, just select notes and you've got a list of all your notes. You will also on the home screen. Reboot. There we go. So we'll go back into the iPhone. Uh, right down here where it says recent in the middle, I have all of my recent activity. So all of my recent properties I've pulled up, all of my recent searches, all of my recent reports, they're all right there. And then finally, I have all of my saved properties that I've saved. So sometimes maybe you're showing one of the houses and... Um, you know, we're, we're out showing houses to a buyer. Again, I always go to list at the top. That's my go-to icon because I just work better in this way. And, and you're showing this house, you've shown seven houses to these people. And they say, um, this is, you know, this is it. You really get a good feeling. They like this home. This is the one they want to purchase. Remember, I can touch the finger because when you let up off the screen, that bottom row is going to disappear in a moment. So if I touch the screen, whoops, touch the screen lightly, you'll see everything appear. And I'm going to press the star button to save that. Then when we get back to the uh, coffee shop and they're like, gosh, I really like that house. And they start asking questions. You press the save button and boom, there's that house, and you've got all the answers that they want you to answer right there. And remember, they might say, what did that kitchen look like? You can scroll right through and show it to them. So those are a couple of features that I like to use RPR that are really easy for me to do. I want to show you just a couple of other things that, that you have the ability to do that are kind of interesting is if we... Um, I'm going to go back to all properties and I'm going to go to this property right here. Notice I have, I just selected this and then I select, I selected the bottom. One of the things that's kind of interesting about RPR is the ability to come right down here uh, underneath the map. And you will notice that I can get driving directions here. And I can also find nearby comps and properties for sale. My sister's moving back to my area, and I happen to belong to the MLS where their house is at. She's telling me they want to move back. We're all excited. She said, do you have any idea what you think my house might be worth? Now, I don't. I'm a member of the MLS there, but I don't, um, I don't um, you know, work that location. So I told her, I said, well, uh, let me see. So I put their address in, brought their house up. It gave me an RVM, you know, right here. So I kind of felt good about the price, but I scrolled down here and I said, find nearby comps for sale. So now I'm locating nearby comps. And again, I always, that's my go-to button, the list button. I hit the list button and now I was able to look at everything in her neighborhood, see what comparing those to their house, 
And I pretty much came right in on the price that the agent listed it for. So you'll love this feature. It's right down here under location and details. You can either find nearby comps or you can get driving directions. And by the way, sometimes I've been, you know, I've been in an area and I'm going to just move over here. And sometimes I've been with people in my car and maybe we were like right here. So I'm just moving my finger to kind of relocate there. So, you know, it's right here and, and I'm here I am in my car. We're parked on the side of the street and the, the uh, buyer says, man, I really like this area. Look at this. I can zoom out and down at the bottom, there's a draw button. And now I can draw a map. You would ping, you know, you would take a little time to do that. And I can sort these by uh, least expensive. And I could filter these to say we only need, we got to have three bedrooms, two baths, and we need something between 200 and 300. And now I'll apply the filters and I'll hit the list and it looks like there's only one there and it's so, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. I uh, remember Carol and I actually sold Carol that house. We, I, I showed Carol everything and we couldn't find anything for her. And we, we were over in this one area and we were trying to find this house and she said, you know, I really like this part of town. This is the area I like. I wish there was something in this subdivision. And I I didn't have RPR at that time. It wasn't available. But I remember getting the Realtor.com app out. It knew where I was. And I drew a map around the subdivision. And boom, we had five or six that popped up. And she said, that's the one I like. Let's go look at it. I called the agent, showed it to her, and she bought it. That's just the way, you know, the world is today. We have technology and tools. And I'm here to tell you this application, well, it rocks. I mean, I read an article two days ago in the Wall Street Journal about all of the apps we download and people never use. But I'm, you know, maybe they use two or three days and they never go back to it. I mean, you can look at all of the apps that I have. Now, I'm a tech guy. but this app, the RPR app, I mean, I use it all the time. It's a great application. So I hope I've given you some ideas that to some ways to use it. My apologies if I if I went a little too slow. You know, as a technology teacher, I try not to go too fast. Sometimes my mom, she's 85 and she says I'm like the when I try to show her something, she says, I'm like the tech guy on Saturday Night Live. If you've ever seen that skit where the guy like flies through how to do stuff. But uh, my, I did record this. You can watch it again if, if you need some help. And again, I want you to know I'm available if you need assistance from me. So um, very quickly, I'm going to draw, I'm going to un get rid of the uh, iPhone. I want to show you how you can get in touch with me in case you need to uh, reach out uh, to me. You can go to businesstechguy.com and my phone number, my contact information, it's all there. I do a lot of two-minute tech tips on how you can use RPR and other technology devices. You can sign up for that right there. So uh, feel free to go out there. If you need to get a hold of me, you can contact me at businesstechguy.com. And also then I promise to show you at narrpr.com. If you go down here to the bottom and you check blog. So go all the way to the bottom, select blog. And then right here, uh, you're going to have the ability They've moved things around on me again. Don't you just love that? They get stuff working. So it's industry segments. They used to have the real nice little buttons right here. Industry segments, brokers and owners. Right there. 
and you want to sign up for enroll right here sign up for the broker tool sets it's free it doesn't cost anything so if you're not seeing your brand up there be sure and do that be sure and check on that okay any other questions phil i'm going to just glance at those real quickly i appreciate everybody you've been a great group um you can save searches from matrix be added automatically to RPR? I don't think so. I think you'd have to recreate those. Probably is going to come in time. Uh, what does override location mean? Um, that just means, Nancy, that if you are, uh, for, for instance, in my example, I don't want my phone to look at my GPS location. I want to be able to manually disguise where I'm at and I want the phone to think I'm in Las Vegas. So that's what that means. Can I choose to show all pics at once on the screen? I don't think so because they would just be so small, but that's a great question. So, um, someone's thinking of selling, they inquire about their property and then I use the APP. How, um, that's a great question that might get a little complicated, Alex. We might have to have that conversation offline. I think there's a way to do that. Um, let you see 10 houses in a day. How can you find the ones for which you made notes and picks? Uh, I think hopefully I showed that Daniel where uh, I just answered that. Thank you. <laughs> I see your next question. Um, okay. What is off market? for sale distress mean? Great, Nancy. Excellent question. That we cover in the basic class. Off market just means it's not listed. And RPR is monitoring the neighborhood. So as we go into a specific neighborhood, uh, we can look at the properties around the subject property, the property we're going to list, and actually see what RPR thinks those homes are worth. Now, you got to keep in mind, and I talk about this, I'll be talking about this more next week on the basic webinar. You have to keep in mind, it's just a computer. I mean, I got a listing inquiry this week and RPR gave me a price and I was kind of excited about it. But when I got to the house, I couldn't wait to get out. I mean, it was really dirty and bad and you've been in those kind of houses. And, uh, so by the time I used fine-tuned that property, it was nowhere near what the RPR price is. So it's just a computer, but RPR is looking at the off-markets and distressed are the pre-foreclosures. So everything's color-coordinated and it will show you that as well. Uh, yeah, I didn't talk about flyers under reports and we didn't talk about reports, Linda, and I apologize, but all of your reports are there and you can customize those and do some flyers as well. Um, by the way, I did record the webinar. Several people ask about that and I'm going to put that on the business tech guy website. So if you go out to, um, you go out to my business tech guy website that I just showed you a minute ago. It's businesstechguy.com. I'm going to post that and it will be um, under the blog area. Whoops, that's. So if you go out here, just go to the blog and it will be posted right here. It'll be a, a new blog that will be up. Okay, so I think that does it. Hello, Mary. I don't know if you're Mary from, if you were back here. I think I knew a Mary Dickerson back in Missouri. So, um, so yes, I have the recording. You can also send me an email, john at businesstechguy.com. I'll forward you a direct link to it as well. Well, you've been a great group. I hope this has been helpful for you. I want you to know I use the app daily. It's just uh, a great app. I think you're going to find it very helpful. And uh, I'm glad you guys are on board with RPR. Feel free to email me or call me if you have any questions. Please know I'm here to help you out, okay? Thanks again. Have a great day in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas and more than anything, go out and sell something today, okay? Thank you again. Uh, Ada asks, John Mayfield is my name, so if you need that. And it's john at businesstechguy.com for my email. Thanks again.